Hello, Kelly Kuo here, Artistic Director of Organ Mozart Players, coming to you from my pre-rehearsal quarantine at my parents' home in Pasco, Washington, where you can see behind me the Baldwin Acrosonic that served as the piano of my youth. Now, normally I would be giving a pre-concert lecture in person, but because we are at a point in the pandemic where live performance is not possible, neither is a live pre-concert lecture. But don't worry, I have put together some material in this video that will hopefully get you in the mood to watch this special performance by our musicians of a program specifically put together to celebrate the holiday season. We open our program with Calm and Bright, a gorgeous arrangement by Katie O'Hara Labrie of the popular Christmas carol, Silent Night. Ms. Labrie is a young cellist and a middle school orchestra director in the state of Virginia. It was Christmas Eve in 1818 when Silent Night was first performed as Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht. Its first audience was attending Christmas Eve Mass in St. Nicholas Church in Oberndorf, an Austrian village in the province of Salzburg. Pictured here is the Silent Night Chapel, a monument that stands on the site of the former St. Nicholas Church, which was damaged multiple times by flooding through the years. Father Joseph Moore, a young priest in Oberndorf had written the lyrics two years previous and asked Franz Gruber, schoolmaster and organist in a nearby village, to compose a melody and guitar accompaniment for the Christmas Eve Mass after river flooding had damaged the church organ. According to Herr Gruber, an organ builder working at the church took a copy of the song to his home village where it was picked up and spread by two families of traveling folk singers. Over time, the song evolved to the version we know today and has been translated into over 300 languages around the world. So well known was this song that during World War I, during a temporary truce on Christmas Eve 1914, it was sung simultaneously by soldiers in French, German, and English. Let's listen to a part of this arrangement about a calm and bright silent night. The next work on our program is by Arcangelo Corelli, the noted Baroque violinist. Now, due to Mr. Corelli's extensive touring of Europe to develop his reputation as a virtuoso, he was perhaps not as prolific of a composer as others. However, he did manage to, one, amass quite a financial fortune, two, build a pretty extensive collection of fine artworks, and three, get buried in the Pantheon in Rome. So. There's that. Of the works that Corelli did manage to compose, most of his greatest works were written in Rome, where he enjoyed the patronage of influential patrons, including Cardinal Pietro Ottoboni, who commissioned the work on tonight's program, the Concerto Grosso in G minor, known as the Christmas Concerto, because the manuscript bears the words Fatto per la notte di Natale, or written for Christmas night. Estimated to be written around 1690, it was the eighth concerto in a set of 12 that wasn't published until almost 25 years later, after the composer's death. Baroque concerto grossos normally featured a small group of solo instruments called the concertino, among a larger string ensemble, the ripieno, with an accompanying keyboard as the continuo. Tonight's concertino consists of two violins and one cello, which was typical for this period. In Corelli's time, concertos fell into two categories, concerti da camera, or chamber concertos, and concerti da chiesa, a designation marking the work as meant for performance in a church, but not necessarily for liturgical use. The Christmas Concerto falls appropriately into the second category. 
A typical church concerto would have four movements, but tonight's piece is unusual. It has a total of six contrasting movements, including the serene and lilting pastoral, which ends the work and gives the Christmas concerto its name. After all, the title pastoral suggests shepherds who visited the manger in Bethlehem on the very first Christmas. Let's take a listen to some of the pastoral now. Corelli's style of playing and writing had a large influence on both his contemporaries and his successors, including Johann Sebastian Bach, who not only studied his works, but also used one of his melodic ideas in an organ fugue. Now, thanks to the melodic and architectural invention of the Christmas Concerto, it has remained one of his most popular works. Following Corelli's concerto, we have a work by our namesake Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart that is so beloved and so often performed that it has become almost annoyingly ubiquitous in present time. However, organ Mozart players has not performed Eine kleine Nachtmusik since 2006, and I think it's time to bring it back. In Mozart's time, Vienna was famous for its outdoor night music, performed by instrumental ensembles in the streets almost daily and at all hours, even past 1 a.m. or later. One can imagine how this late-night music revelry might be nowadays received in the United States. But back then, during the happiness-pursuing Age of Enlightenment, there was such universal love of music that the late-night performers would soon be surrounded by an applauding crowd of listeners who then would accompany the musicians to other neighborhoods in the city. Most of the Viennese serenades would probably have been played by Harmonie Musique, which were ensembles of wind players whose instruments were arguably better suited to outdoor performance than string instruments. So, Eine kleine Nachtmusik, Mozart's last serenade, is unusual in this way because of its scoring for a string ensemble. Not much is known about why this piece was written or how it was first performed. It could have been written for an indoor party or written on commission for all we know. But we do know that it was written in 1787 while Mozart was in Vienna working on his opera, Don Giovanni. But as to whether Mozart actually heard it performed is anyone's guess. We also don't know for sure if it was meant by Mozart to be played by just five players, the customary string quartet plus a double bass, or a larger string ensemble. Though it sounds charming either way, our performance tonight will use 11 string players. The iconic fanfare of the opening is so recognizable that I don't need to insult your intelligence by playing it now. Instead, I'll whet your appetite with the infectious and joyous ending of the final movement that is most welcome this holiday season. Okay, let's be real. When it comes to the holiday season, most musicians will think of Handel's Messiah, Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker, or even Bach's Christmas Oratorio. Arnold Schoenberg would probably be the last composer anyone would invite to the party, right? After all, Schoenberg, 
the Austrian-American composer of the so-called Second Viennese School, is credited with the implementation and popularity of atonality, thanks to concepts like the 12-tone row, in which works were composed entirely from a specific sequence of 12 pitches. But here we are, 2020. Enough said. Seriously though, those hoping for the 12 tones of Christmas will be let down because the work that is being performed is unexpectedly conventional. Schoenberg's Weihnachtsmusik, or Christmas music, is a fantasia on two carols for a small ensemble of two violins, cello, harmonium, and piano that he likely composed in 1921 for himself and his family to play together. The first carol is this one. And the second carol is our friend Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, the beautiful silent night that opened our program. You can hear both carols played at the same time in the way that Bach might have combined multiple themes in his works. Take a listen to a part of the piece where this happens. What is interesting is that Schoenberg and his family were Jewish. However, they did not regularly attend religious services, and musicologists surmise that they likely celebrated Christmas as a secular holiday in an attempt to find solidarity within the largely Christian community in which they lived. The penultimate piece on our program is an arrangement of an arrangement of carols, collected by the English composer Rafe von Williams. The composer's Fantasia on Christmas Carols from 1912 features a solo baritone voice, chorus, and full orchestra. But since singers without masks are taboo at the moment, as are winds and brass, we will be playing a shorter arrangement written for strings. A pioneer in ethnomusicology, thanks to his collecting, cataloging, arranging, and publishing of around 800 English folk tunes, Vaughn Williams' own works couldn't help but be influenced by these songs. This fantasia captures the essence of von Williams' compositional style and keeps us firmly in the holiday spirit by centering on four traditional carols. The Truth Sent From Above, Come All You Worthy Gentlemen, On Christmas Night, and There Is a Fountain, with fragments of other well-known carols like The First Noel. Here's a little snippet of the original piece for you to listen to. We end our performance with a fun Stephanie Fife arrangement of Jingle Bells, combined tongue firmly in cheek with a couple of Mozart's most well-known pieces. 
One you will immediately recognize because you will have just heard it earlier in this performance, Eine kleine Nachtmusik. The other tune comes from the famous overture to Le Nozze di Figaro, The Marriage of Figaro. I think I'll let this witty short piece speak for itself in the performance and let you get on with your day. But thank you so much for watching. Hopefully it helps further your enjoyment of our holiday performance of Noel. See you there.